the concept of containers can be a little bit complicated. There's a lot of jargon, a lot of acronyms, but containers are really just a concept. They don't manifest themselves as physical objects or even really virtual objects in real life. Um, they're really just running processes. We'll take a look at how they work here over these next several videos. And hopefully the ideas and, and some of that jargon and acronyms will start to coalesce and make sense. If we look back at how programs originally ran, they would run directly on a piece of infrastructure, maybe a server, or could be a workstation even. And that application would be running on that particular computer, which had some operating system, Windows or Linux. When that application was running, it was aware of the operating system it was running on. It had to be written for that particular operating system, it had to be compiled for that particular operating system. Also, that application would have to ask the operating system to do things like access the disk drive or draw the video on the screen or use the network. And so even if the application wasn't directly dependent upon the driver software, it was indirectly always depending upon the computer of having some device installed and the software driver that was running that device to be compatible. And so the applications were really tightly bound to the actual computer itself. And we would say that they were not portable. It was difficult to pick up an application and move it from system to system and not have some kind of consequence. Also, the application normally wouldn't use up very much of the resources that the hardware had. So we would say that density was very low or that the application wasn't using the underlying infrastructure very efficiently. And infrastructure being a uh, something you had to buy that you couldn't return to get your money back, at least not after a very short period of time, it's a capital expense. You spend the money and the money's gone and there's really no way to recoup your costs unless you wanted to take a huge loss. As time went by, virtualization came around and there was a partial solution for a lot of these problems. By running virtual machines on top of that expensive infrastructure, we could now use more of the infrastructure's computing power, more of the memory, more of the disk space and network bandwidth capacity. And these VMs could be packed tightly on this infrastructure. Maybe you can get two or four or more VMs on a nice server and really put that server to work. And now the applications are really only dependent upon the virtual machine operating system, which you get to choose. Even if the underlying infrastructure is running Linux, there is no reason you couldn't run a Windows virtual machine, for example, on top of a Linux server. And so through this virtualization, the applications became a lot more portable. You could write the application for a particular OS, and it didn't make any difference if the server had that operating system or not, as long as you could run the application on top of a VM. In fact, entire industries like having ESX servers came along where the underlying operating system was really just an optimized hypervisor and the infrastructure was dedicated just to running virtual machines and really didn't do anything else. And the, the density went way up because you could pack a whole lot of these VMs onto a single piece of hardware that you had to outlay for. But now you could run, say, eight virtual servers or possibly more if you have a really nice computer. And then on top of that, you can run all sorts of applications. You could also have multiple VMs running the same application. So now it became possible to have redundancy built in where if maybe if one of the virtual machines went down, no big deal, the load balancer would just start spreading load across the surviving virtual machines. So the density is quite a bit better, still not quite optimal, but a much better use of resources. And now we have containers. Well, a container is a concept. It's really an application that's running with restricted privileges 
and an application that brings its own file system with it. So the files that an application needs are packaged with the actual application. We call these dependencies, they're abbreviated on the diagram as DEP DEP. So now we can have an application with its dependencies, everything it needs to run, in an image. And we can deploy that image to a container operating system, like a, a Docker, for example. And we can run that application in this restricted environment. And so the application doesn't know that it's running on top of a particular VM. From the application's point of view, it's running in this very consistent environment. It has all the dependencies it needs right there with it. So it's not dependent upon the virtual machine in any way. And it's really very portable and quite isolated from the underlying VM. There's no more tight coupling between the virtual machine and the applications anymore. They're, they're quite independent and they can happily run on just about any VM as long as they have a container environment to run on top of, again, such as like a, a Docker environment or a container D environment that they can run on top of. So now these applications are truly portable. You can run them in the cloud, you can run them on your laptop at home, you can run them on a server or rent a server and run them on top of other folks' virtual machines. Really have a lot of options. And the applications, because they're so portable and because they have everything they need to run bundled together with the application, they don't have to worry about things like what operating system there is or certainly not worry about problems like drivers and hardware compatibility and anything like that. Also, you can imagine the users of the application are going to have a really consistent experience. It doesn't matter if the underlying VM happens to be Windows or Linux. When the user accesses and uses the application, they're going to have the exact same consistent experience no matter what that app happens to be running on top of at the time. The container environment abstracts away all those problems. So in the diagram here, we have application one running on container one. And that's in this example here is running on top of Docker. So we actually have app one running on two different Docker instances or nodes. So we'd say this is like a swarm. And then application two is also running in a container two. And that is also replicated between VM one and VM two. So now you can imagine if say virtual machine number one crashed for some reason, or maybe it had to be patched and rebooted, or there was some sort of maintenance cycle going on. VM2 could handle the load for a little while, and application one and two would just continue running no problem at all. And then when VM1 came back online, the container one and two on that particular node would spin back up, and we would have our redundancy again. And typically, you won't see them in pairs like this. You'll actually see them at least in triples, and so that if you drop a node and it one comes back online, then the nodes can work together as a team to decide who's in charge and keep the system running and maintained and monitored the whole time. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the nature of images, containers, and orchestrators a bit more.